from in Hollywood. It's the Tom Mikey Show. Oh my God! Oh, here I go! Oh, and now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's every kind radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Right down our telephone number, you're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, as you know, uh, one of the longest-running shows on TV is called ER. It's a show about an emergency room. That's really all you can say about it, because all of the original characters from the show are gone. There's nobody left. So the emergency room stays. Everybody else changes. Okay, but ER has been on for a very long time, and uh, pretty amazing for a show whose title is just two letters, ER. One of the longest-running shows on TV. Well, I'm going to do... Uh, one of my favorite shows, and it's not called ER. This one's different. My show is called HR. We did HR once before, a few years back, and it was very entertaining. So we're going to bring it back for a second appearance. And you may not have heard it the first time, so uh, I'm sure you're going to find some entertainment value. Now, even our engineer, Art, uh, Art did you uh, hear HR the first time we did it? No? Okay. Here's what HR is. These are real-life stories from the HR department. You know, the Human Resources Department at your company, these are people who have a thankless job. These are the people. By the way, how do we avoid the HR department? We have our own studio away from the other employees. So we never see the other employees, therefore we don't have to deal with any HR issues. You know, if one of us was not bathing or not using deodorant or something, nobody would even know because it's just us here. We just tell each other and resolve the issue. Okay. But the HR department, and you're right, Dean, there is some, uh, Mike Darnell or somebody's probably writing this all down and it'll be a TV show before you know it. But uh, my show idea is this, okay? It's a reality show where people who run the HR department call in and tell us the most embarrassing situation. They had to uh, defuse at the office. Now, let me give you some examples because this show was so outrageous the last time we did it. I can still remember almost every call we got. Let me give you some examples from the last edition of HR. We had somebody call in who said they had a Mexican female in the office who didn't know about sanitary pads or tampons. And she had to be called into the office to be told by the HR department what what to do down there. Okay, We had somebody else call in who had to explain to, uh, to an employee the importance of daily bathing. We had somebody call in who had to deal with the fact that two people were getting together in the supply closet and banging away during work hours. <laughs> had to bring both people in and say, uh, I had to bring you in here today. Because <laughs> How do you keep a straight face? You know, the first TV network to stick a camera inside the HR room when people are being called down to the HR department, that's a hit show. That is a goddamn hit. Now, I know at this time of day, we have a lot of people who are heading home from work. Many of you have had a tough day at the office. And there are some of you who are, let's just say, working in the human resources area. We talked to somebody a few weeks ago who actually was majoring in human resources as a college major, which I think is wacky. 
But as you know, it's a growing field because with all the sexual harassment suits, with all the uh, uh, the people in the office, the ugly feminists and the people who don't shave their legs and stuff. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on at the office people need to deal with. Not to mention having to give the lectures on sexual harassment uh, and having to give the lectures on uh, uh, fraternization with other employees. Having to give the lecture about what days are holidays and sick days and the people who take too many sick days. By the way, did Brian Whitman come to work on Friday? Just curious. He's at an HR matter. Somebody doesn't show up to work on a, on a consistent basis. Somebody has to call that employee in and say something. Usually it's the HR department. I can't say that any particular person is going to be called to the HR department. I'm just curious. I'm sure we have people out there who have to do these things day in and day out. And I know from past conversations I've had on the air that these are some of the most embarrassing situations. I worked at a radio station. I told the story the last time on the last edition of HR. I told the story of how we worked at a... I'm not even going to say what station because she's probably still out there somewhere and will sue me and she'll be afraid that I identified her or something. Let's just say I worked at a radio station somewhere in America with a lesbian promotion director. That's fine. Okay. Lesbian program uh, pro pro promotion director. Um, but she was kind of uh, one of these hippy-dippy people who did not shave her pits and also didn't believe in putting anything artificial under her arms. Meaning in the hot summer, she'd be walking around that office in that tank top in militaristic fashion with that pit hair sticking out and that smell. You can only imagine the, the smell of natural perspiration roasting in the office. And so, of course, what happens is people get together and go, somebody's got to tell her. Somebody has got to tell her. Now, by the way, we did not have a full-time HR person at this particular company. Let's just call it a broadcasting company. We did not have a full-time HR person because it was a relatively small broadcasting company. So you had to see it. There was a manager meeting, and we were all in the conference room, all discussing who was going to have to tell the hippy-dippy lesbian promotion director that she was either going to have to shave her pits or add a little deodorant to the mix or both. So I've seen these problems from the other side because I was once a program director myself and I had to sit in on these management meetings. And that was the level of conversation you were frequently having with people. Somebody is going to have to call Jose into the office and tell him to put the toilet paper in the toilet bowl. Who's going to do it? Not me. <laughs> I'm, if you think I'm kidding, I'm not. As you will hear on this edition of HR, where people who are in charge of the Human Resources Department call in and tell us their most embarrassing stories. So if you work in Human Resources and you've been forced to defuse these situations, the things that nobody else wants to do, I mean, that is a thankless job. Now, the last place I want to be called down is the HR department because I know it's going to be something embarrassing if I ever got called in. It's the last place I want to go. And I know that the HR person probably has to deal with these embarrassing situations several times every day. So I want to know about it, okay? If you run HR, if you're in charge of HR at a company, big company, small company, whatever, and you have had ooh, just unbelievably terminally embarrassing meetings with employees to discuss embarrassing situations. I want to get all of your HR experiences on the air as quickly as I can. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. He wanted to live with me, but, you know, the worst thing that he ever did was have me listen to you because... The more I listen to you, the more I realize that he's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. For the touch of a button, turn your office into a hostile work environment every day. 
We'll see you at the HR department. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Another edition of HR. Not ER, HR. The story of human resources departments. The thankless men and women who have to sit employees down. They explain basic facts of life like bathing, toothbrushing, and uh, when not to touch the telephone, things like that. Mm. 1-800-5800-TOM. By the way, there was one place, Gary reminded me, there was one place where we used to work where you did not need a calendar because every 28 days you knew what time it was. All you had to do is one walk by one particular employee's desk. Our human resources director was in another city. So uh, there was no having a meeting with the human resources department. You just had to deal with the fact that, uh, you know, I'm a little FDS down there. How about uh, aiming a fire hose at that thing? Come on. Little spritz. Put something in there. Come on. <laughs> Don't they have like a power wash? Like when you go to the car wash, they they spritz all that wax all over your... Don't they have something like that? Just stick it in there. Come on. <laughs> little swab now and then. Take a swiffer to it. Something. All right, one 800 800 tom if you work in the HR department and you've had to deal with some embarrassing and potentially explosive situations, I, I just look at the screen and I start laughing because I know what's coming. <laughs> All right, let's start with Javier. Javier, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Oh, Xavier. Tom, Javier. Z Javier, okay, very good. How are you doing? Dean's in my head was going, no, it's Xavier. No, it's Javier. It's Xavier. Right it's there. Xavier. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Whoever you are, uh, <laughs> tell you, you now. You are uh, you are the uh, the guy who runs the human resources department at your company. HR guy. Yep. You're the HR oh. guy. All right. So uh, tell us what happened. So this Brutus of a chick was kept. Ru I also had the uh, the facilities department too. So this Brutus of a chick kept ruining this, these chairs because she kept having her period. So I had to sit her down, and we're all a bunch of dudes. And we're all looking at each other. I'm not going to talk to her. You talk to her. I'm not going to talk to her. You talk to her. So, you know, of course the HR guy gets stuck with it. So I, I have to tell her about how to use a, 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 a tampon. You had to tell her how to use a tampon? <laughs> well, I mean, I had to explain to her that, you know, this is what needs to happen. So you're, wait, well, are you telling me that there was no barrier at all? No, I'm, apparently not because she kept ruining all these chairs. It's not that she was overwhelming a barrier. She she just didn't have any barrier. I, I don't I mean I didn't ask her if she was or wasn't. It was just if something wasn't working, so we had we had to tell so her So you had to tell her and you had to tell her how to use a tampon? How to use a tampon. Uh, now how did she react when you were telling her this? Well, she was obviously embarrassed, but I mean this was like a tech company, so they're all a bunch of geeks anyways. Right. So this one was a geek chick, I guess. A geek was, chick. Yeah. <laughs> Who didn't uh, know anything about hygiene. Who didn't know anything about hygiene. Now, did you get immediate results there? Uh, the, the other thing we did was we put a, uh, we asked her to bring in a, like a, a pillow, uh, a small, like, uh, <laughs> pillow that you throw on your couch just in case. You know, like maybe when the Dodgers give away those seat cushions and bring one of those in. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so that's my so, story. So you got results. Good. She didn't ruin any more chairs after that. No more chairs. I just have to wonder, you know, first of all, I don't know how you could be this stupid and dense not to notice you're doing this. But number two, how embarrassing is that for the employee, much less oh, you? Dude. I mean, she was the kind that had, you know, food on her chin and the whole bit. She was smart as hell, but. Like so many. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Xavier, thank you. All right, man. Appreciate the Xavier, Javier, whatever.
1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Dan in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Lycus Show on this edition of HR. Hello. Hey, Tom. I got a great one. I uh, work at the HR department up here in the, in the other white meat. Uh huh. And we had an employee of 20 some years that decided that uh, he didn't like being a man anymore, so he wanted to be a woman. And went through the whole operation and everything. And we had a, an employee that kind of made a, made a comment about it, so we had to let him go. And then I had to put out the proverbial. The so and so will now be referred to as Sally instead of Sam. So that was that was a fun one to do. Wow. Yeah. So did you have to sit down with uh, Sally oh, and have this conversation? Yeah. Oh yes, I had to sit down with Sally and the, and the other person who had made the derogatory comment about the about the person. <laughs> and now, do transgender now do transgendered people have rights in Oregon? Um. They just have just as many rights as anybody else. So if somebody changes their sex, you can't say, well, uh, Sally, if you come in as Sam, you're not going to be gonna be working here anymore. You can't do oh, that. Oh, no. No, it's just like anything else, like, uh, you know, casual Friday. You come in one day as, you know, suit and tie, and on Friday you come in, you know, in casual jeans. If Friday you and this was, this was, was this a man who became a woman? Correct. So Correct. How'd she uh, look after the change? Uh, didn't help. <laughs> And how? <laughs> so, were people? Uh, did you have to deal with them with the fallout of people making comments about that? Uh, just, 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 just the one person we had to let go. But other than that, so you, you had to. Years. So, so the weirdo you you had to uh, keep, and the person who uh, expressed his opinion about it, you had to let him go. Yes, of course. You know, uh, isn't that how it always works in corporate America? I haven't uh, been in the middle of corporate America in some time. I've heard rumors. Yes. So, yeah. Unfortunately, the squeaky wheel always gets the grease. So. Yeah, yeah that was, that, that or the was surgery. One. Yeah, a little surgery. It changes everything. Well, thank you for that, Dan. No. Blow me up, Tom. There you go, baby. one 800 800 tom on this edition of HR. People in the Human Resources Department tell the story of people they've had to deal with in the Human Resources Department. Here's Olivia on the Tom Liga Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing okay, Olivia. Thank you. Okay. Well, let's make this quick because I'm still at work, but I'm listening to you while I'm on the job. This is what happened. I'm 28 years old. I barely started maybe about two years ago with this large firm. And um, the girls were coming to me and telling me that they had a problem with the young lady with the bathroom situation. I'm like, okay, not a problem. What's going on? So they said that whenever she left the bathroom, there's always brown or black residue on the toilet seat. And I, I looked at them, and I didn't know how to decipher this. I was thinking, no, you've got to be joking me. This isn't true. So they're like, no, I'm serious. You, you have to check this out. So then, okay, so I said, well, the next time she leaves the restroom, just let me know. I'll go in there, kind of get a – I had to see it for myself. So you had to do a little reconnaissance. You had to, uh, <laughs> you had to scope out the ladies' room. I did. I did. And you had to investigate for yourself. Correct. I so how much, do they, by the way, you're you're anonymous, darling. How much do they pay you to be the human resources person there? Oh, well, I'm on salary. No, I know. How much do they pay so you? Seven, 72. I make about so, so you get $72,000 a year yes. uh, to go in and do things like reconnaissance in the ladies' room. Talk about, yeah. To see what's on the toilet seat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It must be very fulfilling work. Well, sometimes. Ah, my, oh, the phone's ringing. Uh oh. T no, tell tell him, hold on a second. On. Human resource is going to put him on hold. Or did she put me on hold? Uh, is she not coming back? I'm back. Oh, okay. good. Right. Very so, good. All right, so, all right, so you went in and investigated, and uh, what were your findings? Well, it was true. It was true. There, it was true. There was some sort of residue, okay? Um, Did you have to, like, uh, like, like CSI? Did you have to go oh, in and... Oh, God, God, no. No, 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 no. I just had to make sure it was there that they weren't just telling stories, that I actually right. had that it needed to know that it was really taking place. So I called the young lady in. 
I just basically, I didn't know how to tell her. I, I, I tried to rehearse it. I even tried practicing it at home. All right, take I us inside. Take us inside. Take I didn't us know in, how to go about it. Take us inside your office. Uh, just say it to me the, exactly the way you said it to her when she was sitting and looking you in the eye. So she sits down. There's about a, there's a pause there. I asked her how she was doing, you know, the small talk. Okay. Then I sat there and I said, look, I don't know how to say this. I really, and hold the line. <laughs> Thank you for waiting. Your patience is appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. for holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please. Thank you for waiting. Your patience is appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Your call is important to us. Well, this is out of control. Imagine the composer of hold music. Thanks for holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line. So you're sitting down, you say to yourself, what Thank would I want to hear waiting. if I were on hold? Your patience is appreciated. Please hold hi. the line and we'll oh, be right back with you. Yes. How are you? Okay, we have the hold music there. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I just basically just looked at her and I said, look, I don't know what better way to tell you this. You know, I'm really sorry that I have to come with you with this information, but... There have been some complaints about when you go to the restroom, you leave some residue on the toilet seat. This woman flipped out. She raised... No. We're very busy here. We're very busy. Hold on. Oh, no, 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 no. That's it. We got the idea. Oh, boy. It's painful. <laughs> A lot of complaints in that office to HR. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. Okay, let's go to Cam. This is a good one. Cam, you're on this edition of HR with Tom Likas. Tell us about your human resources story. You got it. I think uh, Olivia was getting a call from HR herself there. But, uh, <laughs> right on, man. Yeah, I was, uh, as, a, as a recruiter for six years, I, I started off with a, a staffing agency. and <laughs> Great topic, man. It's going to be a fun hour. We actually used to talk a lot about... Uh, if any of us had any screenwriting skills, writing a show called Temps about all these crazy uh, things that goes on uh, in, in the HR world. But my story is, uh, is I, I hired a guy, put him at a collection agency uh, about four years ago, and got a call about two weeks later from his manager saying, hey, we, we really don't know how to approach this, but uh, this guy really smells, and we're getting a lot of complaints. And so I called the guy up, and he was a, he was a fairly big guy, and uh, talked with him real quick, and Try to broach it very, you know, casual, same thing. Uh, you know, hey, how's it going? How you liking it? You know, hey, had a couple complaints about, you know, people probably pass your workstation. Uh, doesn't smell so good. What's going on there? So, you know, I acted very surprised. Oh, What's going God. on there? <laughs> I, I have no idea. You know, and it's, you try to, I, you really don't know how to approach it, so you figure out, okay, I can I can probably bro out with this guy a little bit and, and get him on the level. Say, so, hey, man, what's going on with that? Totally embarrassed. Oh, I have no idea. I'll, 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 you know, I'll take care of it and, and blah, blah, blah. So a month later, I'm talking to his manager going, hey, whatever happened with with that, and she's saying, "Oh, it, it, it cleared right up. It's great. Thanks for talking with him." So I had a conversation with him, saying, "Hey, what what happened there?" And I guess he had recently gained a lot of weight and didn't know that he had to clean underneath the folds of his bag, <laughs> and the cheese was getting a little. Oh, oh my God, no! Oh, ow! Oh. I'm glad I didn't have to, to approach that conversation with him, but uh, and he figured that out on his own. Uh, but, you know, bringing it to his attention, I guess, was enough. I want I want all the people majoring in human resources right now in America's colleges. I want you to hear what you're in for. Yeah. This no, is I'm... what you're getting a degree for. By the way, Cam, you're anonymous. How much do you get paid to do this? Not enough, but uh, my salary is 60K. 60K. 
Yeah. Of course. And I dr- spend uh, three or four hours on the road to do it. So go ahead. So go you have to go to different branches and sit down with employees and have embarrassing oh. meetings with them one after another? Oh, I- absolutely. you got to <laughs> Got to feel through uh, the dregs of the earth, man. The dregs of the earth. <laughs> I'm telling you, love it. People who just can't, problems. people who just can't keep their personal problems at home. Oh boy. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Oh, don't tell me this, uh, Joe. You're on this edition of HR with Tom Likas. Uh, uh, I, what a thankless job it is to work at the Human Resources Department, eh? Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? Okay. Big fan, big fan, big fan. So here, here's the deal. I'll get down to it before we cut off because I'm myself. I'm a manager. I've been a manager for several years. Yeah. Hear, yeah, I'm, I'm listening. Do you need okay. me to say uh-huh every three seconds? <laughs> I'm listening so, to you. So, so here I am just doing the walk, making uh-huh. sure the building's Make sure the building's locked up. All right. All of a sudden, I hear I hear a, a noise. Uh huh. Into the uh, stationary room, and lo and behold, here we got a girl who is actually having an orgasm. She's having an orgasm at work. At work in the stationary room next to the number two pencils. Really? <laughs> so she's there. Just I peeked in. I didn't even. She didn't even know I was looking through the door. And she was basically just going down. She was going at it strong, and lo and behold, she finished up, and I had to go and say, okay, how do I deal with this one? <laughs> how do you deal with that? Yeah, well, first of all, you know, being a guy and, you know, of course, having other managers, I kind of shared it. Shouldn't have done that, but we had a good laugh out of it. So uh, we went to finally decided, well, let's go to HR with this. Yeah. And uh, told the girl and uh, told the head manager there, and she says, I don't know how you're, how you're going to explain this one. So uh, she basically said, you know what, I'm going to let you take care of this one. So I went to the girl and I said, hey, you know what, I'm sorry I got to come to you with this info, but uh, last night so I was doing lockup, I was walking by the stationary room, and I kind of seen and overheard what you were doing. And uh, she basically turned around and said you know what okay you caught me red-handed she says uh i don't think red-handed was what you caught her you there no i left the room uh yeah so uh you caught her red-handed and so what did she say she would never do it again no actually she says look i'm sorry i've i've actually done it several times um and i said well and and she felt the need to tell you she wanted you to know exactly so, you know, I stood there, paused, and I said, you know what? I said, you're going to have to stop. And uh, she said, I would. She says, I'll stop. However, she says, is it okay if I do this in my vehicle? <laughs> after that, after that I went back, and I said to the HR girl, I said, you know what? This is all in your hands. <laughs> no, it was all in the employee's hands, actually. Yep. So a week later, she uh, she never came back. A she, week later, she never came back. Um, rumor is that they seen her in the car doing it, too. By the way, let me ask one. you a question, Joe, because people stop at the office and waste time doing all kinds of things. You'll get a glass of water 17 times or get a cup of coffee or talk about their kid's bar mitzvah or whatever they do. Um, is there anything in the employee handbook about orgasms in the office? No, all you have in the employee handbook is obviously the, the basics. No sexual harassment, and she wasn't harassing anybody. So technically, she wasn't violating any rule at the office. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. So she could have just flipped you off and continued doing it oh, until you rewrote oh, the employee handbook. You know, right? I got a gut feeling that she even knew that we were walking by doing the lockup. She didn't stop. She didn't even blink. I, could, I mean, she she had her back to us when we opened the crack of the door because there was another person who was doing lockup. And You say the crack of the door? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The crack in the door, and she had her back, and she was waving away. <laughs> she was waving away, Tom. Unbelievable. How long did you watch? About, I would say about a nice three minutes. Had to make sure you knew what was going on. Yeah, especially because she was in a stationary room where we keep all the uh, security items, and we were kind of wondering what she was doing inside. I mean, she was doing her job, but, you know, she was doing a little bit more than that. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, something I'll never forget as a manager. Let I, me ask you, know, you a question. Now, Joe, if you had an employee, uh, just theoretically, if you had an employee who called in sick all the time, 
hardly ever showed up for work, always had some lame excuse, what would you do? Well, it all depends. If this individual had been working there for a long time, was a hard worker when he was there, gave me 100% effort when he was there, maybe I'll be somewhat lenient. Um, right. But then, you know, there, you gotta you got to draw a line because you got to be fair with the rest of the employees. Right. So at some point, what would you what would you have to do? You have to talk to him, or, or I would have to sit down and talk to him and say, "Hey, listen up, buddy. Look, man, I get it. We don't like waking up in the morning. You know, I... mornings are a drag. Yep. Fridays. Well, sometimes they show up late for Friday. I get it that they're getting ready to, for the weekend already. And I just break it down to the guys. Look, dude. Eventually, what's going to happen is if I got two guys and you guys work the same way, do everything the same, but. I gotta let go of somebody. I'm gonna look at your attendance. Mm-hmm. And if your attendance is worse than this other guy, well, I gotta let you go. Yeah. Because because you guys are giving me the same effort, but yet the other guy's here every day and you're not. And then sometimes they get it. Sometimes they get it. It's mo- mostly the young guys, the young guys who really don't know what they're doing yet in life, and you know they just keep doing it. Sign. Some people just keep doing it. They don't. Oh, they yeah. just, if they yeah, don't feel yeah. like coming in, they just don't come in. Yeah, there was even this one one guy who was doing it constantly, and I said to yeah. him, you know what, let me change your hours by five minutes. <laughs> Maybe you'll get here on time if I give it to you at 7.05. Oh, I have somebody showing up late, but I'm talking about people who just, just don't bother to show up at all. Oh, those those guys, we just give them three chances and you're out, what we call Really? Them. You know, yeah. Three wow. times, you don't, you don't show up and you don't call us. Some companies are much more lenient than that. Yeah, no, we're we're pretty strict. Attendance is very important with us, especially with me too. If I can make it to work every single day, driving about forty miles, and someone who lives a lot closer to job can make it on time. I, I just thought I would check. Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. I've been listening to you, and that is the best advice. Keep her out of the house. Oh, my God. She tried to. She's like, oh, I, I need a place to stay for, for just a week. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Go stay no. with one of your gay friends. No, no. That's right. That's right. Stay with one of your gay friends is a good answer. I like that. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Well, if you're just tuning in, you're joining us for our second edition of HR, a show where people from the Human Resources Department call in and tell us about some of the embarrassing situations they have to fix at the office. Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How are you doing, Tom? Doing okay, Michael. Good. I was going to say, some people who are constantly absent um, uh, used to be um, uh, uh, morning DJ partners with the boss, so they tend to abuse the privilege. Well, I guess sometimes that does happen. Yeah. So what can you do about that kind of stuff? I don't know. I don't know what you do. Yeah. Anyway. (laughs) You have a good one, man. Live live my life by your rules. Thank you. (laughs) 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Uh, all right, so there you are. You work in the HR department, and you have had to defuse some embarrassing situations. If that's you, call us at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Richard on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Excellent. Love your show. Listen, I had a uh, employee working for me, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm part of the uh, human resource in the sense that there is no human resource department. I kind of do it all. I'm the uh, manager at the plant. Okay. And I had a a guy that uh, worked for me. I'm 34. The guy that worked for me was in his 50s, and this guy was a pretty big gentleman. I'd say somewhere around uh, close to 300 pounds. And the guy just smelled smelled really bad. Really? Uh, He he had a... uh, I don't know if if I can say it, but it is... uh, he just smelled bad. You could tell that he didn't wipe. He didn't clean very well. He's a big gentleman. And I had some complaints from the people there that, that the guy smelled. So I had to confront him about it. And uh, I mentioned it to him once or twice. I was really vague. And one thing you can't do in human resources is be vague about things. Uh, and I just told him, listen, you're an adult. And I don't think I have to tell you about this. I shouldn't have to, but uh, you need to take care of it. 
Well, that didn't work. The guy still came to work smelling really bad. Uh, the guy would bend over. He was in shipping, so he would bend over, and you could see his underwear, and you can clearly see uh, where he was wiping himself in. Uh, you so could I, you could tell the pattern. You could see a skid mark, man. You could see the skid mark on his undies. Wow. And, uh, yeah, the guy was gross, man. And how uh, did you see? Wait, how did you see those skid marks? I'm just curious. Well, he, the guy's in shipping, so he would bend over all over the you know, everywhere in the shipping area to grab uh, the the the, crip, the crips uh, uh, pants, you know, hanging down. Uh, and uh, the uh, yeah, he was sag a lot. But either way, so we drove dragged, dragged him into the office. And uh, we sat him down and we talked to him. Hey, listen, you got to do something about it. I, I offered. I told the guy, listen, I'll go on the internet because I know there's such a thing, and I'll find you. A, I'll find you some kind of combination of stuff that'll work to keep the odor off. But you got to do. You got to do your part. You got to take a bath, but. <laughs> yeah. so how did he wait? How did he react to that? Oh, he, you know, he was embarrassed. You can see, you can see his face was red. And uh, he sat there like if he was in shock, like he couldn't believe we were actually talking to him about that. And my, again, my boss is pretty, pretty blunt, pretty straight out. This guy's a, a retired Navy captain, so he don't take crap. And he, he laid it on him, man. He says, listen, Richard's already talked to you one time. And I don't think, you know, if you're an adult, we shouldn't be telling you this. You need to take a bath. Yeah, yeah, you need to take a bath. And the guy said, "Well, it's it's my uh, my sweater, you know. I don't have time to wash the stuff." And I, I think it goes beyond that, buddy. Yeah, really. So the guy, the guy got. I love when they make it harder and they start arguing with you about. No, I know. <laughs> I know that's not true. Nobody else complained. Nobody told me I smell like that. Nobody I said do. anything. I, you know, it's funny because... Why don't we go out in the office? We'll ask people. We'll ask them right now. Come on. We'll go out. We'll ask people once and for all. Tell me if I smell like that. <laughs> yeah, and it is funny because people around around the guy would, were too too embarrassed to tell him anything. So, you know, they they come to me and say, you got to talk to him. I'm not going to work with this guy if he keeps smelling like that, you know? <laughs> Yeah, that, that that was that was a pretty pretty odd situation. That is very rewarding work you do there. Oh, it is. I tell you, it is. And I tell you, I I never really solved this, uh, solved the problem because the guy continued to kind of smell that way. We just got lucky that there was an opening at another plant in another state, and uh, he just happened to want to go there. We shipped him off. <laughs> that was great. It was great. Anyway, that's my story. Thought you'd enjoy it. Thank you for that. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Don on the Tom Likas show. Hi Tom, long Hi. time listener, first time caller. Thank you, Don. Um, good, good topic here. Boy, could I write some stories for the Office TV show? Really? Um, I've got one situation where we know nothing. We have quite a large population. It's not until an employee comes to approach us to tell us about her fiance has a temper and he's highly jealous just so happens he works with her on site and i said well why would he be jealous and uh have a temper and she says well he's jealous about the relationships i have with co-workers and i said so what does that mean for the guys in the department or other people and she's like well he's only jealous about one person i said this seems odd you have nothing to tell me that would make him jealous and she's like no so I bring in her fiancé to say, you know, hey, you've been uh, pointed out as somebody who has a temperature and is highly, uh, I'm sorry, a temper and is highly jealous. Is there a problem? He goes, well, why would she say that? I found out she was cheating with one of the vendors on site. And I am like the fact that she's dating him. And I, he goes, wouldn't you be pissed off, too? And I said, yeah, I think I would be. I understand if you're upset. So long and short, she came to sell him out to get him in trouble and transferred on site. This is the guy she's living with. So oh. Continue the- oh, my God, that's outrageous. The Tom Likas Show.